Today, we're just going to be talking about maximum funding. When I say maximum funding, it sounds fancy, but it's just, it's going to be personal funding and business funding. And it's just going to be how to get the maximum amount of funding in your first round of funding. Now, if you're inside the program already, like most of you guys are, we're, we're basically going to do all this work for you and get this all set up for you guys. But I want to make sure um, that you guys like see what it looks like if you were going to get like, uh, if, if your file was the best and, and basically how you can walk through the process and how there's levels to this stuff, right? It's pretty interesting once you go down the rabbit hole of like trying to figure out what these banks do and how they get money. Okay. So the ideal funding process, right, for everybody is we remove all the negative items off your credit. That's what a, a lot of people are in. We remove all the inquiries off your credit. Okay. So on all three bureaus, right? So depending on what state you live in, the banks are going to pull from different bureaus and we're going to remove all of your inquiries that we possibly can. Now you can't remove an inquiry if it's attached to an active credit card, because when you try and attack those, the whole credit card will just disappear, right? So that's why we kind of emphasize, hey, don't apply to any credit cards while you're going through the process, while you're getting ready, because it'll just get you an inquiry that we can't remove, or we'll have to just remove that card altogether. And in some cases, it's actually better if you just let us remove old little small credit cards, because we'll be able to get you bigger credit cards next. All right. And you also want to have an LLC set up um, and you want to have a few strategic bank accounts as well for personal and for business. And the reason for this is a lot of these banks, they're relationship based. So you just have to have an account with them and then have at least like I would say 250 bucks in there. 250 bucks is, is just the number for Chase. I know for a fact, if you have a Chase bank account, you have to have at least $250 in the account. Otherwise, you're going to get denied when we when we apply, even if you have a perfect credit card. It's kind of weird. All right. Then you're going to buy trade lines and then the trade lines have to hit. Right. Ba -ba -bum. Why trade lines? Like, why are we so obsessed with trade lines? Trade lines are going to add age to your credit card file. Right. It's also going to lower your utilization. So like, if, if you have fifty thousand dollars in debt and then we buy five hundred thousand dollars worth of credit card trade lines, your utilization is going to go down to 10 percent. And now you're good for funding. Right. So we have a lot of people that are in a lot of debt. We're kind of looking into actually doing a lot of debt consolidation as well, just because we might as well go for full circle with this thing. Uh, but when you buy the trade lines, your age goes up, your utilization goes down. If you don't have any $20,000 credit cards, the banks are going to look at your file and they're going to think it's too thin, right? They're not going to give you a $20,000 credit card. They might give you a $5,000 credit card or a $1,000 credit card. But if you want to get the real big credit cards like we go for, uh, you want to have these big trade lines on your account. The big trade lines are going to be the reason that they give you the bigger credit cards, right? Because then you're you're basically piggybacking on somebody else's credit, right? I mean, you should want to buy as many trade lines as possible so you can get approved for, for more money, right? The more trade lines you get, the more money you're going to get. And there is a point where like after about like six trade lines, I would say the trade lines, they don't they don't have as much of an effect as the, as they do if you just have like five or something like that. And you want to you still want to have some primary accounts of your own. Uh, but the trade lines are just basically the best way for us to get you the first round of funding and get you the maximum amount. And when you're looking at trade lines, you want to get the oldest trade lines. You want to get the biggest trade lines. And you basically just want to make sure that they're seasoned, right? They're not from some garbage site that, that they don't tell you about. So, and when I say trade lines, trade lines can be a lot of things. You can actually get trade lines for vehicles. If somebody has a car, they can sign you on to that. You can get trade lines for mortgages even. They literally sign you on to the mortgage and they make on-time payments and they build your credit that way. Uh, the ones that we're talking about are strictly credit cards, right? And that's because we're going for 0% interest credit cards when we go into funding. You can basically get signed on to any of these though, and it can boost your score, right? And boosting your file is what, what, what it's all about. And that's why we're, we really want to emphasize that why you need these trade lines, all right? This is the perfect file for funding. Now, if you don't have this perfect file, it's okay. We, we, we still know what to do, but this is like, if we can get everybody to this level, not only are you going to get a lot when we go into funding, but you can go and get a house, you can go get cars, you can go get uh, all kinds of crazy stuff, right? And this is what we're shooting for with, with almost everybody. So we, we really want to be above 700 um, these days. It was like 650, then it was 680, and we can still do really good funding for people with 680. But if 700 plus is really where we are seeing like the biggest breakthroughs. And then 740 is another line where they get a huge breakthrough. And then 780 is really like the superhuman freaking funding when we get people that have a, an amazing credit like that. But not everybody has that it's pretty hard to get that high but at least above 700 is what we want on all three credit bureaus um, no late payments less than two inquiries and no other negative items we've gotten really good lately at removing late payments we figured out like a, a new way to remove them which is exciting so that's going to be huge for all you guys late payments are like late payments are literally the hardest thing to remove right now off of your credit i mean other than bankruptcy i would say bankruptcy is is the hardest but 
a late payment will stay on your report for like seven years. And the only way that you can remove it is with factual disputing, which is what we do when we do our credit repair. We literally pull your file. We look at if there's any errors on any of the bureaus. And if there is an error, we use that error and we get it removed completely. That's the, the the latest stage. The other ways that we do is we literally call the credit bureaus and we just tell them a story and we try and get them to basically have some mercy and remove it off your credit report. That's like the first thing we do, but that's, that's pretty cool. Like if you get a late payment, I would call the creditor right away and just say, look, I had something come up. I'm, I apologize. Can you please not put this on my credit? It's going to affect my ability to buy a house and, and buy my kids groceries, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of the times the first agent you talk to will say, no, we can't do that. And then you hang up and you call them back and you get a different agent and that agent will remove the late payments. That's just something that we've been learning lately. Uh, but you don't want to have any late payments, less than two inquiries, and no negative accounts, right? And we remove all this stuff for you guys, right? And you want your credit age to be at least two years. We did get one guy... 200,000 and his credit was only one year and eight months, but he had a really, he had a lot of income, right? If you have a ton of income, the banks are going to be a little more lenient on you. But for most people, at least two years, this is another reason why we want to buy the trade lines. Utilization below 10%. Um, we've been doing a lot of funding for people that are around like 15 to 20%. And I mean, it's just not, it, it just isn't as good. We really want to keep it as low as we possibly can. Um, five primary accounts. Okay. If you don't have any primary accounts, this is why we recommend people buy self- Covo, those basically credit builder loans, because we need some positive accounts on your report. Just because we remove all the negative accounts, the banks still want to see that you have some positive accounts so that they can have faith in giving you uh, the money. And then you want an LLC, ideally with one year or more. I know you guys have new LLCs, so we can still just do it with new LLCs. But if you have a one year or more, we can get you more funding, basically. So that's why it's like, hey, start the LLC like yesterday, get it going. Um, and the whole, the whole thing is like, once you get the business funding for the initial business uh, funding, you really want to start to build that business's credit up, right? And then once you get to a year later in that LLC, you can do another round of funding for the business. Or even, it doesn't have to be a year. It could be like 90 days, really. Because you want to show bank statements for three months, or you want to show last year's taxes when you go in and you do more business funding. And that's how you can really level it up. Um, so basically, why, why do we want to have the best credit profile before we go into funding? All right, because if your credit profile isn't where it needs to be, if if you if we're if we're missing any of the stuff, you're just gonna get flat out denied, right? You're gonna get denied by the banks. So you're gonna have lower limits on the credit cards, right? Instead of getting a twenty thousand dollar credit card, you're gonna get a two thousand dollar credit card or a five thousand dollar credit card. I mean, you're not gonna get all of the the high interest. Now, most of the the credit cards we go for do still offer the zero percent interest, but they won't give you the bigger limits. Like we want to get you the $20,000 cards that have zero percent interest. That's really like the holy grail. Some of these Amex cards are actually unlimited. And then some of these other ones are like 25 or 15 or 10, like, but we still want to try and get you the zero percent interest credit cards with the biggest credit, right? Um, and this can literally be the difference between like getting 20K and getting 200K, which is a big deal, right? The bank's job is to manage risk, all right? So you want your credit profile to look as least risky as possible. That's the whole thing. The banks make money giving giving out the money, but their whole job isn't to lose the money. Their whole job is to manage the risk, right? That's why your credit, your credibility file is what's going to be the big difference between them giving you the bag or, or giving you just like a sample to see how you do, right? And even if they do give you a starter credit card, you can still make on-time payments for three months and then you can ask for a credit increase or we can apply for another bigger credit card with those banks. So it's always this like stair-stepping process of creating this system that's getting you more and more and more funding. And then you just have to really master using the funding to turn a profit, right? Using, using other people's money to create passive income, to create massive income and just keep paying the banks back and being, being someone of your word and having that credibility and getting you to that next level, right? That's what it's all about. So what bank account should you open before funding? All right, so you should at least have one business bank account. If not, I would also, I would recommend honestly having like one main big business bank account and then two credit unions. Now this is extra credit. This isn't like mandatory. This is just what I do. And it's because when I get my, my, my main funding into my business bank account, I move my money around to these credit unions. So I, I have one big main bank account with Chase, and then I have two credit union bank accounts for my business. And I move that money around. And then every 90 days, I go and apply for more funding from these banks. So that's just like a top secret thing, but it doesn't matter. But before we go into funding, we do want to have at least a PenFed account. We do want to have a Fidelity account. And if you can, I would also recommend SoFi and, and uh, Navy Federal. All right, so PenFed and Fidelity, these are mandatory. And these are because these banks, these banks are giving out a lot of money, right? We're, we're getting people $20,000 credit cards and like a $40,000 or $70,000 loan 
from PenFed. And then Fidelity is a 0% interest, $20,000 credit card as well. And these banks will only give you a credit card if you have an account with them. That's why we have you guys open these. And then SoFi, SoFi is getting big. SoFi is like in the news and their business is blowing up. They're actually a really cool bank. You can set up some interesting stuff with SoFi too, where if you get a bank account with them, it'll automatically put money into the certain stocks that you want to buy. And it will also, you can save money. So anyway, SoFi is cool, but we mostly just go for loans and credit cards. So for PenFed, SoFi and Navy Federal, we can get you a credit card and a loan for one inquiry. That's why these are so powerful. Uh, the Navy Federal one, you, you either have to be an Army veteran or have to know an Army veteran or live with an Army veteran or get referred to. So we can refer you and send you the link, and we'll talk about that if, if we if we want to do that. But Navy Federal, just they're a really good bank, too. They'll they'll give out a lot of credit. And like with Navy Federal, if you get what's called a, a – you basically get the funding, you put $20,000 into your savings account, you let it sit for about a month, and then you can apply for a $20,000 loan backed by your, your savings account. And they'll basically give you a really big loan again, you, no matter what your credit is. They don't give a shit about your credit. So that's another way that you can get another round of funding after we've done the initial round of funding with Navy Federal. And then what a lot of people do is they'll pay that loan off right away. And they'll see now they have a great relationship with Navy Federal because you got a $20,000 loan. You paid 19000 of it off right away. And that builds trust with Navy Federal and they'll give you an even bigger credit card and a bigger loan. All right. So that's just what we do. Why do we recommend getting the maximum funding? Okay, so this is like, this is important. So a lot of people come to us just for business funding and business funding is beautiful. They do it, run it. When, when we're doing our funding, we want to make sure that we get you the maximum amount because when you do the funding, you have like a 30 day window to get as much capital as possible, right? And yes, you, we can get you a hundred thousand, maybe 150,000 and just 0% interest business credit cards. And that is the holy grail. But we could also get you an additional 150,000 on the personal side. And what's cool about this is like, these are credit cards. You don't have to spend the money, but if we're doing all this work, right? If we're, we're getting your LLC, we're cleaning all your inquiries or making sure your credit is like on point, And then we're going into funding. Like just let the professionals get you as much money as possible, right? You can get, you can just send the money back to the banks if you don't want it, but at least you'll have as much capital as possible. Like if we get you 300,000, like that's, in, that's like a life-changing amount of money. You're never really gonna have to worry about money ever again. So don't limit us is what I would say. Now, if you're risk averse or you're scared of, of getting a bunch of money, which is totally fine, some people are, I just want you guys to understand, like I'm always gonna recommend, hey, just let us get you the maximum amount. We're professionals, let us do our thing and get you as much money as humanly possible. And it's because this first round of funding is just so crucial because once you get the money and you can start making payments back to the banks and you can start making a profit and you can start your business or buy your real estate or do whatever you're trying to invest in, that's a game changer. And there's always going to be more things that you need capital for, but you don't have to use all the money. You'll just have the money available. Does that make sense? Like that, that's why we recommend just let us get the maximum amount let it be there and then just have to manage your your emotions so you don't go buy a bunch of stupid stuff. But make sure like, let us just do the maximum. The maximum is going to get you the most amount of capital possible and it's going to set you up for success down the road, right? Because if we only get you uh, business funding, right? And then you you basically put all that into your business and then you still have other expenses and other things that you need to do. The personal funding is gonna be, isn't going to happen because we basically got too many inquiries on your personal credit during the funding. And then you've used all the money and now your utilization is all screwed up. So it's just, it just makes sense. Like set yourself up for success, go into funding, open-minded, let us get you the maximum amount. Um, and then we'll teach you how to, how to basically turn it into an income afterwards, right? And turn it into a profit. All right. Um, before we start the funding, we build a custom plan for each of our clients. Okay. So this is going to be based on where your credit's at. It's going to base, be based on what state you're in. It's going to be based on what your income is. Uh, what your credit history is, because I mean, honestly, when I was a young hooligan, I burned a couple banks, right? So I know there's certain banks that still have me in their files and they will not give me a dime, <laughs> right? So that happens to people, but we want to know that stuff. And basically we build a, a custom plan before we go into it. And then also your business history, right? If your business has a lot of income, we'll be able to go into these credit lines and we'll be able to get in, get into these loans and stuff like that. That will not happen for people that have a brand new business, right? So there's just different stuff. So this, we make a custom roadmap for each of you guys. I mean, every single person, depending on their certain situation and where they're at in life, right? Um, so the maximum funding process, first we hit the commercial banks. So the way that it really works is like, this is our funding process, right? We have different rounds of funding. 
So the first bank that we always hit is going to be Citibank. And Citibank is just very particular, right? They'll give you a $20,000 0% interest credit card, um, but they don't want any inquiries. So that's why we hit Citibank first, because if we hit Citibank after the first couple of rounds of funding, they're just going to deny you, right? And this is a great card, custom cash. You can get actually more than 20,000, um, but it's got 0% interest for 15 months, right? Great credit card, super, super powerful. And then we hit Amex. And this is, this is some people say you should do Amex later because they're eating more lenient and they'll, they'll still get approved you. But the thing about Amex is we can get you like five credit cards for one inquiry. So that means that we got you a $20,000 credit card with Citibank. We got you five credit cards with Amex for two inquiries, right? Then we remove those inquiries and we move on to the next one. Discover, Wells Fargo, Built, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So these are the commercial banks. So these are the big ones. Um, if you want to learn more about commercial banks and stuff like that, here's a cool website. It's called a uh, US credit card guide. So this is where we kind of go and like, this is where we kind of nerd out too. Like I've got a couple websites where I just learn about new credit cards that are coming out. I learned about how the bonuses are structured. So it's just called US credit card guide, right? So all the commercial banks are here though. So these are, these are all of them. There's Amex, Barclay, Bank of America, Capital One, Chase, Citibank, Discover, Synchrony, US Bank, Wells Fargo, blah, blah, blah. Um, so what's cool about this website though, is it'll tell you the best dates and the best times to apply to these banks. And basically it'll tell you like, here, let me just try and find one of these weird ones. Benefits, 150K offer after spending $10,000 for the first three months. So the cool thing about these Amex cards that we get you is you like build a relationship with Amex and they'll, they'll give you more and more and more. You got to warm them up though. And they have an annual fee, application time. We also, when we apply, we only apply after hours so that it's not real people looking at your applications. It's after hours and it's just a robot and we know what to put into the applications. Yeah, see, Amex doesn't care about the number of hard pulls, but they do if 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 you basically apply for them way later down the road and you have too many. We want to get you five credit cards as opposed to getting denied down the road, which is why we do them second. Um, but that's basically the first thing. So we do the commercial banks and then we're going to look at your credit unions, right? So there's certain banks in California and there's certain credit unions that we go to, right? So there's federal savings associations and there's credit unions. So this website's called iBankNet. Uh, and this is going to give us all of the credit unions in California. And you, once you get lower than like a million bucks, so the banks kind of get sketchy. <laughs> Not that bad. I mean, they'll still give out the bag, but they won't give you as much. And they're going to be more of a relationship-based bank, right? So if you want to use these lower than a million bucks, like on the right here, you'll see like how much money they have in their bank. Just know like you might get better rates and it might be easier based on your credit to get approved but you want to really go for the bigger banks that have the money, right? So the Golden One Credit Union, I've definitely heard of them. So we make a list of all the credit unions in your area, right? And we basically want to figure out, okay, does this bank have a credit card? Uh, and then we'll make a custom plan though before we start doing our funding and stuff for you guys, basically. So this bank's kind of actually gives out some pretty good ones, but you want to see like, so they'll give you loans and then they also have credit cards, right? But they don't, do they have a 0% interest credit card? They have a 4%, which is pretty good actually. Blah, blah, blah. So this is how we make a, a funding plan though. So we, we first we hit all of the big major commercial banks because they have the money, right? Now we got to get kind of crafty. We got to figure out, okay, which banks, which credit unions in your local area are going to give us more funding than the other credit unions because there's there's over 30,000 banks. I mean, these are all just credit unions in California. I mean, we want to apply to the ones in California because they're going to be want to build a relationship, blah, blah, blah. And you really want to go with them. Another one is Mission Federal. These guys are doing really good stuff, so on and so forth. So we check out this 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 place, so iBankNet. We check out a little bit of information on like when to apply for these other credit cards as well. Um, and then we also have different rounds of funding, right? So it gets kind of complicated. So there's, there's multiple rounds of funding after we go through all the commercial banks. Banks, uh, then we hit up the credit unions and we have certain credit unions that we really like, but not all credit unions are, are going to work depending on what state you're in. So we have to go into these different websites and figure out which ones they are. Okay. The other thing that happens is we want to know which credit bureau the credit cards are pulling from, right? So we're looking at California. Um, so we go, we go to this other bank. So this is called credit boards. All right. So you click California, uh, we go to Experian approved. Now the problem with credit boards is they stopped working in like 2020 or something like that. The, the data is a little old and it's a little funky of a website. So we, we look over here. So this is a Synchrony Bank. This guy got approved for $6,000 with a 737 credit score. So now we can see, okay, if we apply to Synchrony and their, their credit is around here or less, we'll at least be able to get 5,000 bucks and the, and the inquiry will come up on Experian, right? Here's another one, Chase Sapphire. So now we know if we apply for any Chase credit cards, uh, they're going to basically hit Experian with the inquiry. And that's where we're going to have to remove it. Uh, Bank of the West, MasterCard. I've never even, didn't even know about these guys, but they pull from Experian. They give out small credit cards. Here's a bigger credit card, 10,000 bucks from a city. Another member we talked about Citibank, why we do them first is because they give out big credit cards. Here's a Bank of America, the perfect credit score though. 
So not everybody's going to have that perfect credit score. So anyways, we can now come in here and we can decide what banks actually in California pull from TransUnion that we can look at, right? So now we can make a list. And we basically want to hit all three credit bureaus, right? We almost always do Experian first because Experian is the easiest one to remove inquiries from. And then we move on to TransUnion and Equifax. Um, but some states are weird. Like I don't, I think it was Maryland, you know, Connecticut, some of these other like East Coast, they they all only pull from TransUnion. Um, so we we really mastered TransUnion lately. So we, we figured it out. But now we can go over here. So Discover looks like this, oh, this is a credit line increase. So we don't know if that was actually an initial pull. Banana Republic. So Navy Federal Credit Union, they pull from TransUnion in California. So that's really important for us to know because we, we now know, okay, if we apply uh, for Navy Federal Credit Union in California, our inquiry is going to go on to TransUnion, not on to Experian. Synchrony. Okay, so now you guys kind of have an idea. Like, So there's three different bureaus. When we apply for a credit card, we want to have as little inquiries as possible on that credit union or on that credit bureau because we don't want the banks to know that we're getting you multiple credit cards, multiple loans from multiple banks at the same time, right? So that's why it's so powerful. Before we go into funding, we want to have everything all set up. And then we can basically kick this thing into high gear and get you the maximum amount. And this is kind of how we do it though. So I guess, so you guys some secret sauce. That was a lot of value, probably went over your head, but I think it's still pretty cool just to know and learn more about this stuff. Cause I want you guys to be fully equipped. Basically when you get the funding, you're going to know that this is how it happened. This is how you do it. And then you can start to build your own system for getting more and more and more funding, right? So first we hit commercial banks, then we do credit unions, and then we do the business funding. Now the business funding, we really just want to go in and get you the biggest 0% interest credit cards that we can. Um, and then if you want us to, we can just keep getting you more little business credit cards like uh, Amazon credit cards, Sam's Club credit cards, gas cards. But you want to get as many business credit cards as well when we do the fun first funding. Because we really want to build up your business's credit because the first round of funding is really all just getting that foundation, getting that that amount of that that funding so that you can build something with it. They, so you have a really good rocket, right? Like let's say like your finances is, is a rocket. The fuel is is all in the funding, right? So we can get you where you need to go, right? And then after we do the business funding, we can actually go and get you cars and we can also look at HELOCs and getting you mortgages because your credit score is still going to be really high, um, but you're just going to have a bunch of credit cards now, but you don't want to do it the other way. You don't want to go and apply and get a new car and then try and do commercial banks and credit unions because the car will report on your credit and you'll have a shitload of inquiries from the car as well. Um, actually, I would probably flip this around. I would probably do commercial credit business, then I would do HELOCs and then I would do a car. Just because you know, these car dealerships are going to get you like 20 inquiries and it's just going to screw up your shit. And then HELOCs and mortgages, we can, we can start to look at getting you a house. Make sure you have the income. We've had a couple of people get the funding, buy a house, and then have no income. And it's just like, bruh. So first figure out how you're going to do the income. Because like the thing that nobody tells you in real estate is your tenants are not going to pay the rent every month. <laughs> Things are going to happen. Things are always more expensive. Closing always is a lot more expensive than you think it's going to be. So just know real estate before you get into this. And then the 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 real secret sauce that's like totally mind boggling is actually we can get you a car, right? And you can actually pay more on it, right? And then we can get you more funding and more loans using the car as an asset, right? So you literally get your initial funding. You you don't want to buy like a super, super crazy expensive car. We're talking like get, maybe get like an $80,000 80, $80, vehicle or $100,000 vehicle, pay a lot of it down. And then you can get another round of funding from multiple banks, Bank of America, Discover, a couple other banks using that car as an asset. And you do it all at the same time. And you can literally get like $80,000 back out of the car that you just bought. And then you can do the same thing with houses, right? So you buy a house, you put your name on it, you get the mortgage, you have to pay down the mortgage quite a bit, or you have to put more down in the beginning, right? I would say probably have to pay it down for at least two years. But then you can pull the money out of the house and you can go and buy another house or you can buy a business or whatever you want to do, right? So this is this is some high level shit, but I just wanted to basically show you the funding process. Now, mostly in the first round, uh, what we talk about and what we do is the commercial banks, credit union, business funding. But I just want you guys to know that we do this stuff too, if you want, right? So during the funding, all right, I'm just putting this in there because God, we have so many clients that have, they just self-sabotage. I try and tell you guys all the time, like try not to screw it up for yourself. I really mean that because I want to get you guys the best amount. Okay, so we target banks that on what credit bureau they report to, Equifax, Experience, TransUnion. We go to the banks, we apply it in a specific sequence, right? We showed you guys that sequence. Nobody else has that sequence because we've just done this so many freaking times. We remove the inquiries as we go. We only apply at certain hours, right? We always apply after hours because we just want the... We don't want to have actual underwriters really look at your file. We just want the system to basically approve you or deny you, right? And if you get denied, we hit up the reconsideration line and we call them and we negotiate and we get you approved for it at another time. 
All right, we do all the funding in a short period of time, meaning we do it as fast as we possibly can. Okay, so we, we apply, we apply, we apply, we remove the inquiries, and we apply, we apply, we apply, we remove the inquiries, right? And we try and do this as quick as we can so that you get as much funding in a short period as possible. Um, and then we go into the next stage, right? Um, and if you get denied, like I said, the reconsideration line is is really a big a big deal. So a lot of the times we'll do a lot of applications and like not every bank is going to work with you. Like you're not, you're not just going to get totally approved for every single bank. Some banks have weird rules. Some banks just don't like you for whatever reason, but we call that reconsideration hotline and we get, we get a lot more approvals that way. And the funny thing about the reconsideration line is again, just like removing inquiries or doing anything with credit, you call the people at the office. The first person you talk to says, oh, no, we can't approve you. You hang up, you call back, you find somebody else and they say, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't care. And they approve you for the credit card. It's really is really kind of weird because uh, these these rules that these banks have, they kind of just make them up. Even the credit bureaus are just making shit up. Uh, it's a very interesting place to be. OK, so this is the biggest things, though. This is what I, I do not want you guys to do this. I want you guys to be prepared not to do this. All right. Do not get any late payments right before funding or during funding or once we buy the trade lines. Like if we buy the trade lines. And then you go on some trip and you get a late payment. You're screwed. You literally just shot yourself in the foot. All the funds for the trade lines is basically, you're just screwed. Like we'll still do the funding, but you're, you just basically went from getting maximum funding to just getting whatever we can get you, right? And also don't max out all your credit cards. We had a lot of people over the holidays that are going into funding and they just decided, oh, I'm just going to buy $10,000 worth of presents and not pay any of it and then go into funding. It's like, why? Why, why do all this work to get you so close to the funding and then just you you just don't care right you just screw yourself over right and it, maybe it's just a lack of uh, communication but just don't do that so no late payments don't max out your credit cards because we're trying to get your utilization as low as possible you guys remember the bank's job is to mitigate risk it's all about trying to not be risky with their money they want to give the money out they make money on the money but if you're if you have a bunch of credit cards and you've maxed all of them out and now you're applying for more credit cards that's a red flag to the banks. That's why we want your utilization really low when we go, all right? Don't freak out and spend all the funding once you get it, okay? So when you get the money, don't freak out and buy a bunch of stupid shit, right? Especially while we're funding you too. Like literally this guy got the loan, hit his bank account, and then he spent it like the next day. And it's just like, no, that's not what we're trying to teach here. That's not how you're going to be successful. That's not how you're going to change your life, right? You want to invest this. You want to have a plan for the money, right? You want to get as much money as possible. And then you want to work the plan to set yourself up for success. So you never have to work again, right? So you can basically create financial freedom so you can get ahead of the game. But you got to be smart. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I've done a lot of stupid shit. So the, the human aspect of this is just basically be prepared for these kind of things to come up while you're going through funding. And then the biggest one also is when we're going through the funding, don't just like give up. I don't know why people do this. We get them like 30,000 and then they just say, okay, I don't want to do anymore or I'm, I'm done. And they just stop talking to us. And it's just like, dude, we're, we can get you more money. We can keep going. Or they get denied by a couple banks and then they just give up on the funding processes too. Like while we're going through this list, guys, like there's a shitload of banks that are not going to approve you, right? It's just going to be, it's just going to be part of the process. They just basically are going to say, look, like you're cool. Your credit looks good, but we're just not going to give you a credit card right now. Right. And that's fine. Some banks just have different flavors. So you're going to get a lot of denials, but you're also going to get a lot of approvals. And we have to go through the full process to get you the maximum amount of funding. Because once we do the big commercial banks, right, we those that's going to be really good money. But a lot of these credit unions, they've got a lot of weird rules that we don't even know about. They've got weird algorithms. They've got weird stuff. So if you get denials from these banks, it's okay. You might get three denials and then you might get a $20,000 credit card from one of these other credit unions, right? So there, it's just a process of going through the banking system, applying, removing the inquiries and getting as much money as possible once we do it, right? All right. So you're just one funding round away from your next investment, from your next business. And that's that's basically the process though. So I, I just wanted to like let everybody know, let's refresh. Let's, let's remember why we're here. We're here to create a funding system, turn that funding into profit and start to scale.